Coming up, let us meet a hapless dude whose fine chariot has required no fewer than 10 air conditioning compressors over the space of 11 years. It's a tale of how dealerships have simply lost the ancient art of mechanical diagnosis. And on this point, for the very first time in this holy year of the pandemic, 2022 Vaxo Domini in nomine masci et lockdownius sancti, let us rejoice, fellow sinners, for it's time to slap Volkswagen in the vegetables again. <laughs> because that's what the Bible in hell is presently telling me to do. I even prayed to the chat for guidance before bedtime, and he came to me and confirmed it in a dream, which was quite surreal, now that I think about it. Those really were some exceptional mushrooms last night. Good shiitake. Details next. <laughs> I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Or you can just click the card that's possibly out there now, dude. Just don't wait until midnight, okay? Because it's going to become a pumpkin, we both know it, and then you're going to get stalked by some vaguely... Prince Andrew type with a glass shoe fetish and nobody wants that. A random beer garden physics question from you about gas at the end of this report too, upliftingly. Hydrogen, LPG, methane kind of thing. And we'll meet another dude who thinks I'm wrong, upliftingly. He's definitely not the first and I suspect they've all been in touch with my five ex-wives who are of like mind on that one. Despite hating each other generally, go figure. I suspect they all just hated being traded in. But first, I wouldn't wish Volkswagen ownership on anyone who's not a politician or a lawyer. It's frankly amazing to me on an ongoing basis, almost daily, that people actually inflict this kind of unpleasantness upon themselves when, dude, just one hour a week with the local gym's dominatrix would be just as painful, not to mention heaps cheaper and somewhat less humiliating. My 2011 Amarok, for which I have owned for seven years, has just stuff up its... 10th AC compressor, VW has replaced the others under parts warranty. But because this one had not been used much in the two years I lived in Brisbane, the warranty for the part has passed, even though the kilometres were not clocked up. My point is that the vehicle has only done 216,000 kilometres and one AC compressor in that time might be acceptable, but 10 is just crap. I have tried to get VW to fix it, but they won't. In fact, the last time I took it in there, they stamped the worksheet VOR, whatever that means, it means vehicle off the road, are you able to offer some advice? A hard-working electrician dude named Dean Rogers there. And I am sincerely sorry to hear this, Dino. Nobody deserves that. <sighs> well, almost nobody. Do I have any advice? Like, dude, go back in time and buy a friggin' Hilux. You're welcome. Seriously, 10 HVAC compressors in 216,000 Ks? At the risk of blasphemy. Jesus! Do you just drop it off for its annual friggin' service and say, just the usual chaps, change the oil, the filter and the compressor and I'll see you the Sabo. Like, come on. Three Prong might be the official supplier of vehicles to Satan. But Volkswagen is, of course, singularly distinguished as the most criminal car maker here on earth, having done for the reputation of diesel what Kim Jong-un has achieved for tolerance and what ScoMo has achieved for 
accountability. Amarok is an aging shitbox, right, with numerous design deficiencies, principally essentially 1970-ish levels of safety in the second seating row, and those fucking wheel bolts. Like, has any senior executive Volkswagen dickhead ever tried to change a wheel out in the field, or do they just enjoy fucking with you and seeing their owners suffer? I mean, come on. Amarok also benefits, obviously, if that's the correct term, from that legendary Argentinian build quality. So there's that. Here's the thing that I find especially amazing about Dino's problem, right? And this is not a joke. The air conditioning compressor has failed 10 times. Every time it fails, they replace it under warranty, like up until now. Job done. See you next time. Like, Call me an old-fashioned engineer here, but that's a little bit too Groundhog Day, even for them. You don't think, like, just maybe that there might be an underlying issue in play. Einstein said famously, of course, that it was just nuts to run the same experiment over and over and expect a different friggin' result. Pro tip, in complex, tightly coupled systems, the thing that fails is not necessarily the thing causing the failure. The evidence is there, it's staring them in the face, it's friggin' screaming at them, and those dealership dickheads simply cannot see it, apparently. This could be a manufacturing defect, you know, misaligning something, whatever, or an operational factor, right? Perhaps Dino parks it in the Pacific Ocean every night and when high tide rolls on in, the compressor goes all red October. It's gotta be something. One thing is, however, certain. You don't get Ted Ted or 10 dud air conditioning compressors in a row, not even at Volkswagen. Something else is causing these failures. It is well beyond time to investigate exactly what that something else might be. I'll give you another example of the complexity of this, okay? Let's say you're driving along in your diesel and it's kind of new and your DPF just goes in trowel poopy. You take it to the dealership and they replace it. And then you drive along again and it fails again and they replace it again, repeat. Guaranteed, the DPF is probably not the problem, okay? It's just a symptom of the problem. The problem could be that it's not regenerating because of some other defective component, like DPF, differential pressure sensor with chronic intra poopy syndrome of its own, or perhaps there's a friggin' leak in the inlet air plumbing after the turbo or something, which gives the MAF sensor bad data and causes the engine to overfuel continuously, like whatever. It's something else. The point is, changing the DPF is a band-aid at best. It's like not a cure. It's never going to be the cure. So too, it seems with this frigging compressor, okay? Something else is causing this recurrent failure. Time for the dealership to do some actual investigative mechanicking and stop being parts swapping out monkeys, right? I hate that about dealerships. It's always the easy option and it never fixes the problem. Furthermore, if those dicks have replaced the air conditioning compressor nine incredible times under warranty, then in my view at least that is tantamount to admitting that there's an intrinsic defect with Dino's vehicle which is a 2011 model, which means that the current Australian consumer law applies. Just. It came in on the 1st of January 2011, right? It's not retrospective. Those laws include a legislated guarantee of acceptable quality, which includes reasonable durability. Like, that is legislated. Products have to be reasonably durable. And it's pretty clear that no compressor ever fitted to that shitbox has been reasonably durable. So I don't see how they can just arbitrarily decide right now that further legal compliance is kind of optional. Volkswagen does seem to me to be of the view that 
It's number two's smell like a hazmat incident at the Chanel number five factory, frankly, and thus they do have a track record of believing that consumer law compliance is kind of optional for them. Which is, of course, why Volkswagen Schittsville is the proud recipient of the ACCC's highest award, the Platinum BWE, or Barbed Wire Enema, for pig-headed, dishonest bastardry. Rod Sims handed them that last year when they appealed and lost the right to appeal, the largest ever fine in Australian consumer law history, 125 million bucks. <laughs> yes, for being unprincipled, lying scumbags about emissions compliance. Up next, Lenny Kravitz. I fear that this could be an uphill battle for Dino, however, sadly. So I call on Volkswagen to drop the vegetables briefly. Just stop rearranging them aimlessly under the desk. They don't need to be polished 24-7, dudes. Just give them a break and try for a change to do the right thing. Dig deep, dudes. Of course, to Dino, I would say respectfully, dude. This is like owning a Holden Captiva for 11 years. You will not awaken one day soon and discover that it's suddenly not a shit heap. There is only one long-term fix. That's right. Dr Kevorkian. Stat. As for Volkswagen developing a functioning moral compass briefly and stepping up, I'm just not hopeful. You know, in the seven long years since the Dieselgate scandal, okay, where Volkswagen's proclivity for population poisoning to pump up profit came to light, nobody from Volkswagen has ever reached out to me and said, dude, we think you're being a bit harsh in respect of your assessment of us. And that kind of says it all, really. Like, they could invite me out to lunch for a nice civilised chat about this, and if they did, my gift to them would be, I wouldn't be there. And now this from you, if your fake name is Checkbound and you've got gas. Heavier than air. I never thought about that. I guess the same for home heating gas. There was a leak in my house's gas fireplace and my brother was nearly overcome when lying on the floor to stretch out his back. Sure enough, a pipe had a pinhole leak. The house was only six months old. Needless to say, he wasn't happy. Okay, so this comment relates to my recent video on LPG, which is essentially the hydrocarbon called propane. Link up there, dude. LPG's heavier than air, okay? Air's a cocktail, essentially, of nitrogen gas and oxygen gas, overwhelmingly, 99%, right? And without going all chemistry on you, which pff, nobody wants, the relative weights are nitrogen gas, 28, oxygen gas, 32, LPG, 44. So LPG is substantially heavier than air. Therefore, if you let LPG from Yo! barbecue gas bottle just escape into an enclosed space, such as your basement or fat cave, it's going to sink to the bottom and pool there and just kind of hang around waiting for a spark before going all Hollywood on you. So that could be quite entertaining. It can fall down into drains and things of that nature and last in that situation for quite some time if there's no ventilation. LPG is also a suffocation hazard, right? Because it doesn't intrinsically have any smell, or propane doesn't have any smell, which is why they put that distinctive smell into the LPG and also into town gas. Ethyl mercaptan, or as it's more commonly known in the trade, O Discomo. As for your home gas fireplace, right? And the gas within being heavier than air, that kind of depends. If the gas comes from a cylinder stored on site, it's LPG, okay? And that's certainly heavier than air, as just discussed. If it's from the gas main running in the street, it's going to be methane. And methane is lighter than air. It weighs 16 versus 32 for oxygen and 28 for nitrogen. So it kind of floats, right? It's got buoyancy, whatever. But if the fire's on, the house is usually not ventilated, right? 
not that much anyway. And methane is certainly a suffocation hazard, right? But you can smell the eau de scomo in very low concentrations and it's quite off-putting, <laughs> like the great man himself. So you'll notice the problem well before there's any real risk to your health, as long as you don't just lie around stretching your back and ignoring it. Steam reformation of natural gas actually produces carbon monoxide, not dioxide. Sorry about that. This comment from a somewhat clever dick named Lyndon Harnell. Now, the thing about alleging that someone else is wrong is that you really, really need to be right, Lyndon. Measure twice, dude, and only then break out the chop saw. If you make hydrogen gas by cracking methane, which I have talked a lot about recently, and I'll put a link, you know, dude, it's a two-step industrial process, right? 95% of humanity's annual production of 75 million tonnes or 80 million, whatever it is, of hydrogen gas is kind of made in this way. So the details of the process is really not up for grabs or interpretation. And step one, okay, methane plus superheated steam at about 1100 degrees C delivers three hydrogen gas molecules and one carbon monoxide molecule for every molecule of methane. But we're not there yet. Carbon monoxide is, of course, a deadly friggin' poison, and it would be kinda irresponsible, imprudent, immoral, and illegal to just dump that into the air from Yo Hydrogen Plant and let it waft all over the city or something. That's just a bit too Volkswagen. Which is why there's a second step in the process, right? Like. A second big tank in your factory is at 360 degrees and it is full of steam. Steam plus carbon monoxide at 360 delivers one molecule of carbon dioxide and one additional hydrogen gas for every molecule of carbon monoxide which it consumes. Thus, you eliminate a deadly poison and you get additional hydrogen gas, one more molecule for your trouble, but the plant does fart CO2 more or less endlessly, which is why industrial hydrogen is so impossibly filthy. And claims about hydrogen gas being clean and green simply do not stack up until this production method is banned or superseded, right? Nice try, Lyndon, but fail, dude. In the US, the EPA has defined the National Ambient Air Quality Standard for Carbon Monoxide as not to exceed nine parts per million, averaged out over eight hours, and it cannot be exceeded more than once per year. So there's that. And finally, I dare you to pronounce Australia and America properly a couple of times. Pleading, actually. I don't normally do requests, being generally more of a sex and travel kind of advice guy, but in your case, happy to help, B-Rock. It's just a couple of times, no skin off my uh, veggies. Pronounced properly, pronounced proper, pronounced as proper as possible. Australia. Australia. Murica. Murica. That's the hardest one, too, because you've got to pretend two things. Like, you think it's easy sitting here, you lot, I'm sure, but you have to pretend you're having a stroke. Like, you have to pretend you're having a stroke, and you have to pretend you're taking a dump. Like, Murica. Murica. You don't have to pretend you're taking a dump, but... Cleaner's not in for a couple of days, so, you know, discretion, valour, blah, blah, blah. Anywho, I hope this was everything you had hoped for and more, B-Rock, I really do. Glad to be of service. Now, clean yourself up and get back to allegedly working from home, won't you? There's a good chap.